Hi everyone, thank you so much for clicking this video. If you are a returning subscriber, thank you so much for coming back. If you are new, thank you for clicking and please don't forget to subscribe. So to start the Victorian course set, we are going to need the bodice block. So I have a trace out here. If you have not seen the video on bodice block, I will leave the link down in the description box below for you to watch. So I have the front here and I also have the back trace out. So the next thing I'm going to do now is to extend my bodice to the hip line. Okay, so I'm going to measure from the waist to the hip line for the front uh, bodies and I'll also do the same to the back uh, bodies also. For this size, the waist to hip measurement is 8 inches. So I'm going to impute it like so from the waist 8 inches. Okay. If you have seen the video on the bodice block, you know at the center from we came down by 1 cm. So you are going to ignore the 1 cm, then you start up like so. So you just measure 8 inches from there, like so. Then you square a line to connect the dots. Okay, so the next thing for me is to impute the hip measurement. The hip I'm working with is 39 inches. So I'm going to divide by 4, then I'll impute it on this line. There's no need to add ease because it's a corset. So I'll just put the measurement like so. Then I'll connect from the waist to the point. Like so. Right now, I'm going to extend the dart legs, okay? I'm going to extend it by uh, 13 cm. You can use 5 inches, but I'm using 13 cm right now. So I'll just put a dot there, then I'll connect the dart legs. I'm going to ignore the 1 cm dropping at the center front. Okay, so I'll just mark it like so. Then I'm going to connect. Okay, like so. I'm going to do the same to the back uh, bodies also. I'm going to extend from the waist to the hip line. I'm marking 8 inches. All right. And I'm going to square a line. Okay. Now I'm going to impute the hip measurement. 39 inches divided by 4. I'm not going to add ease, so I'll just put it like so. All right, then I'll connect from the waist to the hip. Okay, so right now I'm going to extend the dart also, like I did to the front. 13 cm, you can use 5 inches. So I'll just put like so, a dot, then I'll connect the legs. All right. Okay, so now to the center back, I actually came in by 1.25. If you are using a zipper, it's necessary so that the zip will not be bulging out. But if you are using an eyelet uh, or loop, you may not uh, put it. So I'm going to connect it now to the hip line. Like so. Okay, so right now I'm going to measure from the bust point to the under bust. So that will give me my bust radius. So I'm going to measure it. I have three inches, so I'll just take the measurement round to form a circle. Okay, so now I'm connecting the dot to form a circle. The circle is just like a guide. Sometimes you may not need it. Okay, but I have it right here. All right, so the next thing for me is to remove the ease I added when I was drafting the basic block, body block. If you did not add any ease to yours, it may not be necessary at this point, but I added to mine when I was drafting. So I'm going to remove it 2 cm. All right, 
and I'm going to connect it to the waistline like so. So I'm going to do the same to the back also. I'm going to remove 2cm. Then I'll connect to the waist. Like so. Alright, coming back to the front, I'm going to come down by 1cm at the armhole side. Let's mark 1cm downward. All right then the next thing for me is to double the shoulder that i almost forgot so i'm going to measure the value of the shoulder that whatever i have i'm going to double it okay for example now i have 7 cm so i'm going to take another 7 cm like so then i'm going to connect it to the bust uh, point Okay, then on the that leg close to the ammo, I'm going to come up by 1 cm. I want to draw a sweetheart uh, neckline. You can draw whatever neckline you want. So, all right. Before then, I'm going to come to the center front. At the center front, at the ammo side, ammo line, I'm going to come up by 1 cm. Depends on how deep you want your sweetheart neckline to be. Then I'll just connect like so. On the other that leg, I'm going to also come up by 1 cm. Okay, then I'll connect it to the center front to form the sweet hard neck. All right, so the next thing for me is to put a uh, style lines. Okay, so I'm going to extend the that leg to form a style line. Just connect it like so, straight down. Alright, so now I'm, I want to put another style line here. You can actually slant it, but for it to be beginner friendly, I will just make a straight uh, style line. Okay, so what I'm going to do is just to divide uh, the waistline, the space here, just divide it into two to get the midpoint. Then I will connect it. I will draw it straight to the hip line, then straight up. Before we work on the style line, we need to uh, snitch the underboss. So at the underboss, I'm going to take half an inch on each side of the dark leg. It depends on how busty the person is, you can take up to one inch, okay? But I'm taking half, then I'll connect it to the waistline, the dart at the waist, like so. All right, then I'm going to use the curve part to connect it to the bust point. All right, I'll do the same to this other side also. Okay, now to snatch the waist or to reduce the waistline, I'll recommend minimum of two inches, maximum of six inches, it depends on you. So I'm going to mark a quarter of an inch on each side of the style line. All right, then I'll connect it to the line on the bust point. Yes. Okay, so now I'm going to connect it to the hip line. You can actually stop like uh, two inches before the hip line or where the other dart also stop, but just to flatten the tummy. That's why I'm stopping at the hip line. Okay, now I'm going to come to the center front. I want to snitch that one also. So I'm going to go in like a quarter of an inch. Then I'm going to connect to the boss point line. All right, then to the hip line also. Okay, now let's calculate how much we've reduced from the waistline. We have quarter, quarter, that's half an inch, and we have a quarter there. If you add it together, that's three quarter. I know it's a quarter scale, so the one that will be under, that will be like three quarter times uh, two. That's we have one and half. That means we've removed one and half 
from the front uh, waistline so the next thing for us now is to cut okay all the dart will be cut off let me just use a marker to mark the places we are going to cut off so these that will be cut off cut off and the side one also cut off okay the center that also will be cut off all right before i finish cutting i want to shape the bottom all right the center front will stop at the hip line you can actually make it lesser maybe like one inch or two inches it depends on you right now i'm going to come to the side front from the waistline i'll just mark four inches downward like so then i'll use the curvy part of my ruler to connect it to the center front You can as well flip your ruler to the other way around yeah, yes the other way around like so and shape the bottom so now the next thing for me is to finish the cutting Labeling is very important so that you not mismatch them. Now to the back, the first thing I'm going to do is to extend the dart leg. I'll extend it to the hip line to make a style line. Alright, then I'll divide the space between here. I'll divide it into two. I'll get the midpoint. then square up and down okay now i'm going to take a quarter of an inch on each side of the line then i'm going to create my dart I'll connect to the hip line. Now let's calculate how much you remove so far from the waist. Quarter plus quarter, that's half. Okay, that, and this is one part of the back. The other part also, the half will reflect. So if you add the two half together, that makes one inch. The center back also will have half an inch. Then it will reflect at the other side of the back. That's half plus half. That's under one inch. If you add it together, that's two. If you add it to the front one and half, that means we've removed total three and a half. Remember, we came down by one cm at the ammo side at the front. So we're going to do the same to the back also. We come down by one cm. All right. Then I'm going to use uh, the curve part of my ruler to draw a line. You can actually make it straight. It depends on you. But let me square a small line then i'll connect all right so now i can cut off but before then i'm going to label this is center back middle back and side back and when cutting this that will be cut off okay so i can cut now Oh, sorry, I almost forgot. I've not shaped the bottom, so I have to shape it just like I did uh, for the front. I'm going to come down from the waistline by four inches. Then I'll curve it to the center back. Like so. Then I'll 
all right and i can also reduce the center back let me just reduce it like uh, one one and a half uh, inches okay you can be creative about it you can do whatever shape you want at the back so i'll just reduce it by one and a half inch then i'll reshape it all right so now i can cut Okay, so I have my front and I have my back. Okay, I'm going to cut two each. That means I need to have six panels for the front, then also six for the back. So I'm going to place on my fabric now and add my joining allowances. I'm going to use three quarter as my joining allowances because I want to create a channel. Then at the upper part, I'm going to add half an inch, then the bottom also half an inch. So I'll do the same to the back panels also. Okay, quickly, before I cut the center back on the fabric, I want to explain something. So if you are adding a zipper, so what you just need to do is just to add your zipper allowance at the center back. But if not, if you are using an eyelet or loop, so you need to create space at the back. You can create whatever shape you want. So um, that means the snitching that we did, that half inch at the waist will not be applicable. So now I'm coming to the bottom now, just mark like one inch. Okay, because I want to do like a V shape. So at the top, I'll mark uh, one and a half. It can be creative about this, but I'll just mark one and a half. Then I'll connect with my ruler. Okay, then I'll cut off. Then I can now add my seam allowances for joining. I'm going to relabel. Okay, so after cutting, I'll just place on my fabric, then add three quarter on each side, then half up and half down. Okay, so I'm using the same fabric as lining. So the next thing for you to do is to iron your interfacing on both the lining and the main fabric. But because this is just for tutorial purpose, so I'll just iron it on one. It could be the main fabric or the line. Then I'll join the panels together like so, like so. Then even the center front, I'll join it on both the lining and the main fabric. So I have the lining and the main fabric. This is the center front. So I'll start with the main fabric. What I'm just going to do now is just to join the center front straight down. Okay, so after joining the center front, I'm going to take the middle front now to join to it. Okay, this is a middle front panel. Okay, so I'm going to take one each. I'll join to each side. I'll stitch down. Then I'll take the side uh, front also. I'll do the same. I'll stitch it down. Then I'll do the same to the back until I'm done. Okay, so after joining the panels, I went ahead and iron open. Okay, so... Like I said, I'm going to create a casing for my bony. All right. Uh, so I, I did the same to the front and the back. Okay. So what I'm going to do now is this. This is the bony I want to use. The bony is like a quarter of an inch uh, in width. Okay. So I'll just make the casing wider. So I'll stitch down by half an inch on each side of the joining. I'll just stitch down like so, okay, on all the joinings like that. Then I'll stitch the sides also. 
okay like so i can create channels at the side also it depends on how much bowling i want to add so i'll do to all parts then i'll be right back okay so after creating the channels after stitching it down so what i'm going to do now i'm going to take the lining then i'll just uh, place on right side to right side then i'll just stitch the upper part i'll follow the curve like so then i'll be right back Okay, so after turning the upper part, I went ahead and under stitch so that the lining will stay in place at the back. Okay, so the next thing for me is to insert the boning. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is to round the edge. You can actually use the your lighter to round it, but I'm using my scissors to round it. Okay, then I'm going to insert it because this is for tutorial purpose so i'm not going to insert everything i'll just do few um, in the front area so i'll insert it like so okay then i'll place my hand where it stops then i'll pull the boning out a little then i'll reduce it by three quarter or half an inch so it will give room for turning the bottom then i'll also round the edge also All right is after this you can actually iron the boning it's preferable if you iron it before inserting it so you do the same to the other part okay so i'll do that then i'll be right back all right so i've ironed now i'm going to insert it like so so you do the same to the other part okay but i'm just showing you how to because this is just for illustration tutorial purpose so i will not be inserting all the bonings okay so now i'm going to turn uh, right side to right side then i'll stitch the bottom like so all right then the side also i mean the back the center back i'll stitch it down then the other center back i'm going to leave a small opening to turn it inside out i'm done stitching all right at this point you can stitch your bust part okay to the bust area then the opening i left at the center front center back sorry can actually be at the bottom it depends on you so i'm going to use that opening now to turn it inside out then note that if you have your full bony it might be a bit difficult to turn it so you just take it slowly okay then turn it inside out So after turning it inside out, you can now seal the opening. You can use your machine or, or any do. Then you give it a good press. Then you can now fix your eyelet. But I will not do that in this tutorial because I'm trying to make it as short as possible. But um, I will do a video on that uh, later. So now I'll just take it to the ironing table. Then give it a good press and I'll be right back okay now i've iron looking nice just imagine having all the bony channels and the bust part it will look more beautiful now i'll just place it on my dress form for you to see and here it is not looking bad just imagine it with a bust pad and all the channels with bony it will look way nicer than this please try us thank you so much for watching please don't forget to support me by subscribing and also give it a thumbs up so that others can also see the video till i come your way again bye for now